This lecture is part of an online course on commutative algebra and will be about tensor products and exactness. So last lecture, we remember we had this following problem. If we've got a sequence such as naught goes to z goes to z goes to z modulo 2z goes to zero, and we tensor it for z modulo 2z, we get the sequence naught goes to z tensor z over 2z, goes to z tensor z over 2z, goes to z over 2z tensor z over 2z, goes to zero. And this is z over 2z, and this is z over 2z, and this is z over 2z. And the problem is here that we can't really put a zero here in because this map here is multiplication by two and is not injective. So there's something wrong here. And there are two similar problems because as well as tensoring with z modulo 2z, we can try taking say the homomorphisms from z modulo 2z to something. So what we're going to do is to take homs from z over 2z to this, to this, to this, and see if we get an exact sequence like that. So let's try doing that. We'll get naught goes to hom z over 2z to z, goes to hom z over 2z to z, goes to hom z over 2z to z over 2z, goes to zero. And let's examine this. Well, this is zero and this is zero, so that's fine. This map is injective. The problem is this is z modulo 2z. So this map here is not on two. And we'd better cross off that zero because it's um, not exact on the right. Um, now, as well as taking homs from z over 2z to something as a function, we could also take homs from something to z over 2z. So we could take hom of z to z over 2z and the same there. So let's write that out. So we get hom z to z over 2z and hom z to z over 2z and hom from z over 2z to z over 2z and then we get zero. Now we have to be a little bit careful about which direction the arrows go in because the arrows actually go in this direction. So you mark them in red so you notice there's something a bit unusual. And the reason for that is that if we've got a homomorphism from A to B and we look at the homomorphisms of B to X, then we can get a homomorphism of A to X by composition. So we get a map from hom B to X going to hom A to X. And notice this is in the opposite direction. We've got a map from A to B here, but the map from homs from B to homs from A goes in the other direction. So all the arrows get reversed and this is incredibly confusing and I keep getting it wrong. Anyway, let's see what's going on here. So this is just Z modulo 2Z. This is Z modulo 2Z and this is z modulo 2z, so it can't be exact everywhere. And if you look again, this map here is multiplication by two. So again, this is not on two, and we'd better cross off this thing here. So in each case, um, if we start with an exact sequence and apply one of these three operations, we get something that's almost, but not quite exact. It sort of fails at one end or the other. So um, operations like this that, that preserve exactness on the right are called right exact. And operations like this that preserve exactness on the left are called left exact. And operations like this, I have no idea whether they're called right exact or left exact because the trouble is, um, the problem here is it's on the left of this sequence. Um, but on the right of this sequence, well, it looks as if it's on the left of this sequence, but you remember I reversed all the arrows. So if I had the arrows going in the conventional direction, it'd be on the right. So I don't know whether this is called left exact or right exact. Um, so 
Uh, what we're going to do now is just quickly check the sort of exactness properties for these two operations, and then we'll use that to get exactness for tensor products, which is a little bit trickier. So suppose naught goes to A, goes to B, goes to C is exact. And you notice that I'm not putting a naught here on the right. Um, then we want to show that um, the following sequence is also exact. Naught goes to hom of m to a, goes to hom of m to b, goes to hom of m to c. And again, there's no zero on the right. And this is quite easy. Suppose we take f in hom m to b. What we're going to do is to show that if something here has image zero there, then it's in the image of something there. Um, and all the other bits of exactness are even easier. So the image in HOM M to C is zero. This means the image of F um, um, is zero in C. So the image of F is in the image of A in B. So F is really a map from um, M to A, if we sort of pretend that A is a submodule of B. A isn't quite a submodule of B, but it's isomorphic to a submodule of B, and usually we're a bit sloppy and pretend that it is a submodule. So um, F is in the image of HOM from M to A. So there's nothing difficult about that proof. Now we're going to do the same thing for the um, other sort of HOM. So this time we take A to B to C goes to naught is exact. And we want to show that HOM from A to M um, HOM B to M and HOM C to M and zero is exact. And of course, the arrows are going in the wrong direction. So now we take F in HOM B to M. And suppose the image is naught in HOM A to M. Well, this means um, F vanishes on A, where we pretend that A is a submodule of B. So F is really a HOM from B modulo the image of A. Um, uh, actually, I guess so the image of A is a submodule of B, which is equal to C. So, so F is really in HOM from C to M. So it's the image, and more precisely, it's the image of something in HOM of C to M. So um, those were both completely routine. The, the proof of exactness for tensor products is a little bit trickier. So suppose that A goes to B, goes to C, goes to naught is exact. So we want to show that M tensor A goes to M tensor B, goes to M tensor C, goes to zero is exact. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the two previous results. So first we pick any module X and we notice that HOM from A to X, HOM B to X, HOM C to X naught is exact. And again, the arrows are going the wrong way. And now we're taking homomorphisms from M to all of these. So we get HOM from M to HOM A to X. And we get HOM from M to HOM B to X. And HOM from M to HOM C to X and naught there. And now, this is equal to 
from m tensor a to x, and this is equal to hom m tensor b to x, and this is equal to hom from m tensor c to x. So this sequence is exact. Now, why do we get these identities here? Well, the reason is that both of these are really just bilinear maps, or rather they're the um, spaces of bilinear maps from M times A uh, to X. So the, the, the linear maps from M tensor A to X are more or less by definition of the tensor product, these, these bilinear maps. And uh, for this one, you notice that a bilinear map from M times A to X can be thought of as a linear map taking an element of M to a linear map from A to X. So these spa two spaces are canonically isomorphic. Um, by the way, this is an example of something called a jointness. Um, so in category theory, what you would say is the functor taking tensor products with M is left a joint to the functor, um, um, sorry, tensor product with A is left a joint to the functor um, um, hom A to something or other, which, which essentially just means that homomorphism from M to um, um, this are the same as homomorphisms from this to X. Um, now in category theory, um, functors that are left a joint preserve things called co-limits and a quotient is a special case of a co-limit. So the, the fact that this tensor product is left a joint um, can be used to show that it autom it's automatically right exact using a bit of category theory. And what the argument here is really, is really doing is just sort of giving the category theoretic argument in this particular case. Um, so anyway, we can now finish it off. So we've got this um, map here, and now we can observe that this says Homs from um, M tensor C to something are the same as Homs from M tensor B to something or other vanishing on um, the image of M tensor A. And what this is saying, if you think about it a bit, you'll say this is really more or less just saying that M tensor C is really the quotient of M tensor B by the image of M tensor A. So saying that the homomorphism from, from something are the same as the homomorphism from thing two to thing three is just a way of saying this is the quotient of thing two by thing three. So this gives us the right exactness of the tensor product. It just says that we have this exact sequence, M tensor A goes to M tensor B goes to M tensor C goes to zero. So tensor products are, is it, taking tensor products has, is right exact, although it's not quite fully exact. Um, now we can use this to calculate Um, tensor products. By the way, everything I've done here, I'm really working over an arbitrary ring R, so I'm taking tensor products over R, and the homomorphisms are all homomorphisms over the ring R, but um, as you see, these formulas are quite tedious enough to write out without putting all these subscripts as well. So how do we calculate tensor products? So suppose I want to calculate A tensor M. Well, what I can do is I can take a map from a free module onto A, and I can take a map from some other free module onto this. And in general, there's no reason why a submodule of a free module should be free, so this might not be injective. 
Well, now I can just tensor this with M. So I get R to the M tensor M goes to R to the N tensor M goes to A tensor M goes to zero. Well, a free module of tensor with M is just M to the M. And this maps to M to the N goes to A tensor M goes to zero. So there we've got A tensor M written as an explicit quotient of two modules. And if you know enough about A and M, you can use this to work out what the tensor product is. So tensor products are quite highly computable. And um, there's another useful property of tensor products for computing them, which is that tensor products commute with direct limits. This is actually another special case of the fact that tensor product um, is, is left adjoint to another functor, but um, we'll, we'll just show it by hand. So what is a direct limit? Well, I'll just give a special case of a direct limit. Suppose you've got modules A1 mapping to A2, mapping to A3 and so on. Then we can form a direct limit, which is denoted by this, and it's given by the union of all the AI, except we have to quotient out by the following relation. We say AI, so this is in AI, is defined to be the same as AJ in AJ if AJ is the image of AI under one of these maps. So if all these maps are injective, we can pretend that each AI is a submodule of AI plus one. And if we do that, the limit really is the union. But in general, these maps might not be injective. So we have to be a little bit more careful about it. Um, well, um, it's quite easy to prove that tensor products preserve exactness because you can see that bilinear maps from a direct limit of the AI times M to X are the same as um, a direct limit of bilinear maps from AI uh, times M to X. And by converting this into tensor products, this shows that the direct limit of the AI tends with M is the same as the direct limit of AI tensor M. Let me put brackets around to make it clear what you're doing. So let's have an example of this. Um, let's work out the tensor product of Q times Q. And I'm going to work over the integers here. So we can write Q is a direct limit of Z mapping to Z, mapping to Z, mapping to Z. And here these maps are going to be times 2, times 3, times 4, and so on. So we can think of this as being Z, this as being um, um, all things of the form n over 2. This is the form all things n over 6. This is the form all things over n over 24, and so on. So you can see that q is just the union of all these modules here. So now let's just tensor it with q. Well, we tensor z with q. We get q maps to q as multiplication by 2, and then we get multiplication by 3 and so on. And these are all isomorphisms. And if they're all isomorphisms, it's kind of obvious the direct limit is just Q. So Q tensored over Z with Q is just the rationals. Well, that's fine, but there's a, a nasty trap that um, one can easily fall into if you're not paying attention. Let's try and work out the tensor product Q tensor with Z modulo 2Z. Um, so, and let's copy the previous argument. So we write Q is the direct limit of all these maps Z, maps to Z, maps to Z, maps to Z, and so on. And now let's tensor with Z modulo 2Z. So we find Q tensored with Z modulo 2Z is the direct limit 
of z modulo 2z maps to z modulo 2z maps to z modulo 2z and so on. And this direct, since they're all the same, this direct limit is obviously z modulo 2z, right? Well, no, this is completely wrong. Let's cross it out. The problem is that we were being a little bit sloppy here. So all these maps are injective. So there's no harm in, no great harm in missing them out. However, these maps here are not injective in general, or at least, well, they sometimes are, so they're not always injective. So you remember the problem with taking a tensor product is taking tensor products doesn't necessarily preserve injectivity. So this is multiplication by two, by three, by four, and so on. So this is actually multiplication by zero, by one, by zero, and so on. So every second map here is actually the zero map. And this means the direct limit is actually zero because if we take any element here, for example, well, it's nothing much happens to it if we pass to here, but if we then go to here, it becomes a zero element. So every element in one of these z modulo two z's eventually becomes zero. So the direct limit of all these modules is zero, not z modulo 2z, as you might think if you were being a little bit careless. Um, okay, so next lecture, we will be discussing the relation between tensor products and localization, and we'll be introducing flatness.